When we use the ChatGPT API, we send a request, we wait a few seconds, and we get a response. But sometimes we want to print that response bit by bit, like a stream across the screen. And here's how to do it. I'll start off with this basic program here that just prints a response from ChatGPT. And the first thing to do if you want a stream is to add a stream parameter to the request, to the create function. So we've got model, we've got messages, and so we add a new optional one, which is stream, and that must equal true. Okay, that's the request done. The response that we'll get back will now be in a kind of list of chunks. And we want to print that list out one by one, one chunk at a time. So instead of this whole print result part here, I'll replace that with a for loop. So each time we get a chunk, we print it out. So for, and I'll use the word chunk in the result. And let's just print out the whole chunk for now and see what we get. Okay, I'll save this and then run it in my terminal. Uh, I'll ask for five jokes so that I've got a decent bit of text to work with. Ha, wow, and that's not really what we want. Well, it kind of is because we've got chunks, but each chunk is an object with a whole load of metadata and stuff, including the actual bit that we need, which is this content part. So what we really need to do is we need to drill down inside the chunk into the choices array and within that the delta and then within that the content. I keep saying and within that. Uh, I like to think of it whenever I say and within that, that means I need a dot in Python. So I'm printing the chunk and within that the choices array and the one and only thing in that array. And within that, I want the delta, which is the difference between each chunk. And within that, the content itself. I'm going to come back and change this in a second. But first of all, let's just see what happens with this. So I'll run it again. Right, it's giving me each chunk bit by bit. That's good. And OK, when we get to the end, we get an error. And the reason is the very final chunk does not have a content property. It has uh, something else instead. So what we need to do is change this content here. And there's actually a really cool Python trick we can do here. Instead of getting the content, we can say, get the content if it exists. And that's super easy. We just replace that content there with the get function. And so we'll say get the content. And because we're using the get function, it means get it if it exists. If it doesn't, it will return the word none, but ideally we want nothing. So if it doesn't exist, give us just an empty string. And we do that by adding another parameter to the get function, and that's just an empty string. So get the content if it exists, otherwise give us nothing. Let's run it and see what happens now. Okay, and we get no error. Good. But you probably noticed that each chunk is on a different line, so it doesn't look very good. And obviously, that's not what we want. The reason why that's happening is because the default for the print function in Python is each time it prints something, it ends with a new line. And what we want to do is kind of override that by telling the print function, each time you print something, end with nothing, with an empty string instead of a line break. And so that means everything will appear on one line. So back to our Python program. And I'm actually going to put the parameters on their own line so that it looks a bit easier to read. Right, the first parameter is the actual content we want to print. Let's add a new parameter, which will tell Python, each time you run the print function, end it with nothing. So end equals and then an empty string instead of a line break. Let's print again, uh, run again, I mean. OK, aha, OK, that looks much better, much neater. I don't know if you noticed, though, it didn't really print everything out chunk by chunk. It was kind of like line by line. And that's because it's another default in the print function. It's actually a buffer. So it's got a kind of memory in it and it will store each chunk in this memory until it's kind of got enough 
and then print that whole chunk, or not chunk, that whole bit of memory, that whole buffer to the screen. And we don't really want that. We want it to print out every chunk at a time without filling up the buffer. So ignore the buffer basically is what we want to say. And the way we do that is we say to the print function, each time you run, flush the buffer, flush that memory so that it's never filled. For that, we need a new parameter in the print function and it is actually just called flush and we make that true. All right, let's go back and run it again. There we are. Looking good, looking good. It's printing it out properly, but we get this weird sort of percentage sign at the end. Now you might not get this. I think it depends on the terminal or the command prompt that you use. But in some cases, because we're um, not ending the print uh, function with a line break, it kind of is not really sure what to do at the end. And so it sometimes prints this weird character. The way we can get rid of that is by just adding something to the very end of our program saying, print a line break, effectively you know, finish it all off nice and neatly. So let's do that. One more addition to the program. At the very end, print an empty line break. And for the last time, I'll save that and run it. And fingers crossed. Please tell. Yeah, this time I'm going to do 10 jokes, so we've got lots of text. Yeah. Oh, it stopped. Okay, well, there we go. All right, so we've got the whole thing printing nicely. We've got no weird uh, ending character. Um, it's exactly what we wanted. So the uh, jokes might not be that good, but hopefully this code example is, and it will help you with the ChatGPT API.